guys, so today I thought we would talk about my Trevor Y books. A whole bunch of you guys keep asking me about them, even though technically I really only mentioned it a few times. Some of you have even gone ahead to order it. I thought I would let you guys know what I have, what I started on, and sort of my whole process into how I fell into the Trevor Y books. So first off, let me just show you guys the book that I work out of the most. It is this guy. This is the Trevor Y Practice Books for the Flute, books one to five. This is actually considered an old edition now. Ta -ta -ta -ta. This is the Trevor Y Practice Book for the Flute, books one to six. So there's actually a sixth book in here. You guys are probably wondering what is that sixth book? So let me just kind of go over here. Books one to five cover tone, technique, articulation, intonation, and vibrato, and breathing and scales. Now when I ordered this book, I actually ordered another book to go with it. I ordered the practice book for the flute, book six, advanced practice. Guys, this book, Holy crap, the exercises that he puts in here are not for the faint of heart. It is incredibly difficult, but incredibly rewarding in terms of how you spend your practice time. Trevor Wise thing is to give you a tiny little exercise that you work on for a long time. And his thing is that if you spend the effort into perfecting that tiny exercise, you will cover a lot more ground than if you were to try to tackle an entire etude book, for example. Basically, his way of practicing is very time efficient, which is extremely useful for us peeps in the 21st century. As you guys can probably feel, there is more school work at school than ever before. There are more extracurricular activities than there are ever before. So really in this day and age, practically speaking, there really isn't actually that much time for practicing. And that's why I subscribe so heavily to Trevor Wise's way of dealing with exercises. Now you guys are probably wondering how I fell into these books. I actually started working out of the tone book. This edition that you see right here is extremely old. This is actually a hand-me-down from one of my former teachers. She had an extra practice book number one on her person, so she just gave me one of her older versions. Before this spiral bound version came out, all these books were separate tiny little books like this. Whoever approached Trevor Y to put it in a spiral bound book, I applaud you. That was a fantastic move. I don't really want to show you the exact page inside because that would, you know, go against a lot of copyright rules, but I can tell you about it. In the first section, he walks you through practicing your harmonics. If you guys have seen my Flute Center of New York videos, you would have heard me play my harmonics. Now I refrain from doing the harmonics exercises that are in these books in those videos, again, due to copyright issues. But this is where I learned to do harmonics. Essentially his thinking is that if you make your fundamentals super, super strong and you learn how to play the harmonics without switching to the real fingerings, then it actually forces you to properly learn how to play those higher harmonics beautifully that fits the way your mouth works and the way your flute works because actually every single flute and every single flutist plays a little differently. So it's actually been a learning curve for me while I walk my students through harmonics and we end up experimenting a lot just so I can figure out exactly how best they should play their flute. And that's just from the teacher's perspective. From the student's perspective, when you are learning it yourself, you will find that once you really hone in on those harmonics, your tone will drastically improve. Then he takes you through low register, and then he takes you through middle register, then high register. So he gets you to practice one note first as a reference note, and then he sort of stretches you out. So it's kind of like tone yoga. This book is tone yoga. I spent an entire summer on this book. And in terms of the low register, I spent an entire month. And this was when I was about 10 or 11 years old. I was one of those really boring kids 
as you can imagine. A lot of you guys have commented and noted that I really like to beef out my low register and I credit Trevor Y for getting me to fall in love with low notes. I started to get a little bit curious about the other books. I think I found this like in Long McQuaid in Vancouver. I think this was closer to around 50 bucks. Canadian when I got it. I discovered a couple years later that on Amazon this was only going for $35. So you're only paying $7 for each book. You can't get cheaper than that. You, you can't. I also looked into the articulation, intonation, and vibrato, and breathing and scales, but the one book that really, really intrigued me was Technique. Now the thing is, historically, I have hated Technique. I felt that it was useless, but I thought, oh, well, if Trevor Y had this really interesting way of working on tone, then he must have a really interesting way of working on Technique. And sure enough, he really does. He basically breaks down scales into tiny little wiggle exercises, and it forces your fingers to figure out which fingers are being lazy, which fingers are too enthusiastic. He's basically just drilling you, but he's drilling you with a purpose. It's mostly self-discovery because the human body is really interesting. If you find out what you are doing wrong, the human body can actually adapt and fix it. But the human body can only adapt and fix it if you are self-aware. And these exercises, will make you very self-aware. Now the exercises that I especially want to highlight in the technique book are what he calls the Machiavellian exercises. He does explain in here that Machiavelli was some sort of really sinister, crafty, not so nice guy in the way back when, hundreds of years ago. You can actually read about him on Wikipedia. He has called these exercises Machiavellian exercises because they are really Machiavellian. They are not the nicest exercises in the world, but I have noticed that after practicing these Machiavellian exercises, pretty much everything else I play feels like a piece of cake. They are little one bar exercises wherein it's just a pattern of four sixteenth notes that you're repeating. And that might sound easy, but once you get this, and you look at those Machiavellian exercises, you will know they are not that easy. I like to get my students to primarily work on their technique out of here, and then they apply what they learn from this technique book to their etudes. There's really only about like a bar to maybe one phrase in each etude that is actually really difficult. All other parts of an etude typically are very predictable, but there will be that one bar or that one phrase that will just completely throw you off. Every single exercise in the technique book here is basically that one phrase that one bar. As you can imagine, it does save you a lot of time if you work primarily out of this technique book in this day and age. Now you're probably wondering what is the difference between these two editions aside from the fact that this one has practice book number six included. I will read a tiny excerpt. So on page seven, he's getting you to play this really beautiful B natural and he is making you use that as your reference note. And he says here, it may take 10 to 15 minutes. Fine, unless you have a train to catch, you will achieve more by practicing this note than by trying to cover pages of exercises. I do not know any other flute exercise method book that will talk to you like that. Now, in the new version, it instead says, it may take five minutes or more to do this, but the effort will be worth it you will achieve more for your tone by practicing a beautiful B than you would by playing pages of exercises. So as you can see, some of Trevor Wise's personal sense of humor got lost in the new edition. It's not all lost in here, but I have noticed that there are a few changes here and there that just kind of startled me a little bit. If you guys wanted to know a little bit more about Trevor's sense of humor, there are two other books that I think you guys would really like. One is the, it's right back here. Here, let me grab it for you. I love it when everything is like, you know, within arm's reach. Here is the practice book for the piccolo. I pulled this book out some time ago and I was like, yeah, I'm going to practice the piccolo today. Oh, ho, ho. I started doing some tone exercises on the piccolo and stuff like that. And then I read this. Now keep in mind that I have not actually played the flute that day yet. I just pulled out my piccolo and that was the first thing I did. It is unwise to start off your day on the piccolo like a demented banshee. Do some flute practice first to warm the lips. 
oh the way that he writes in his books you really feel like he is there in person you really feel like he is actually your teacher and he's actually teaching you so for those of you who cannot afford flute lessons and you are self-teaching get these books well this one's the cheap one that's online right now i believe it's going for about 35 to 40 dollars somewhere around there so worth man this is my holy grail flute bible i just wanted to add in the practice book six the advanced practice one he even teaches you how to circular breathe this is legit now the other book that you guys might like in terms of his humor it's full of his humor is proper flute playing. This book, as you can see from me just kind of going through it like this, there's actually no flute playing in here. This is all just him writing his thoughts about being a flutist. He talks about how to be a good teacher. He talks about how to be a good performer. He talks about how to be a good student. He does get a little bit serious in this book when it comes to, you know, being a serious student, but he's still really funny. Now, a lot of you guys have noticed that I call myself just another flutist. Shouldn't it be flautist? He writes this as an afterthought after his bibliography. Most people wouldn't even see this if you weren't paying attention. Flautist or flutist? A friend told me he had been at a dinner party when an elderly lady turned to him and said, And what do you do, young man? I'm a flautist, he replied. Some time passed and she suddenly turned to him and said, What exactly is it that you do with floors? Perhaps we should try flutist. It's simpler, self-explanatory, and widely understood. It saves awkward questions, too. And that is what convinced me to use the term flutist instead of flautist. That is it for this video. I hope that was helpful for you guys. For those of you who do not play the flute, I do know that there are holy grail Bibles for your instrument. I think on the trumpet, it's the Arbin book. My brother worked out of that one. Let me know in the comments below if you do not play the flute, what is your holy grail method Bible for your instrument? And for those of you who play the flute, if you have worked out of Trevor Wise book, let me know what your favorite quote is from him. Also, if you guys didn't know, Trevor Y actually has his own YouTube channel. I will link his YouTube channel down below. Basically, I am one of his worshiping fans that he doesn't know about. Kind of creepy. I'm sorry, Trevor Y, if you happen to see this. And as usual, if you guys like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday. My last video is over there. And if you want to catch me during the week, my social media networks are down there. But otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Bye. You can probably see it reflected in my eyes, but I have two big studio lights here now. I actually finally went and bought a set of studio lights. They're still pretty cheap for studio lights because, I mean, come on, I am not going to shell out thousands of dollars on studio lights. I think this is already a huge step up though. I actually have another overhead light up here. I am aware that I probably need to kind of change how I do my makeup. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm a little bit bothered by the fact that these lights make it seem that my foundation is actually darker than my skin tone down here. You guys will have to kind of live with this for a little while while I get used to everything. I hope you guys enjoy this new quality, but anyway. I just had to get that out of my system. Oh, I was supposed to film this video on Wednesday, which was yesterday, but I could not get around to it because I was still learning how to put these lights together. Once I finally put the lights together, I did a few tests. I'll insert here. You can see how bad they were. <laughs> testing, testing with the new lights. Wow, these lights are very bright. Testing, testing, testing. I realized that I had to completely redo all of my manual settings on my camera to get things to look good. I think they look good now. Let me know in the comments below if you think they look good. Hopefully I can cut this little portion just at the very end because I know that most of you actually don't care. And for some of you guys, this will be the first video of mine you have ever seen. So you would have no idea that this is actually a huge jump in quality for my videos. By the way, do not expect this lovely lighting next week. Next week's video I filmed with my old lighting, just so you guys know. We are going through a transition period.